Hey, welcome to our Type 3 software demonstration. Um, first step, let's import the STL file that you sent. Right, import STL. When I import an STL in Type 3, I can choose the which view. I mean, I figured out it was a top view and the resolution. So, 1000 here. Yeah. We just need to center the piece. There we go at the center. Okay, so that that's the file we got. Uh, here, what I can see, and uh, that we have some flat area, some engraving, and some 3D. So probably I will do different toolpaths. I will use the type part toolpath, the 3D on all those area, and everything else will be 2D, and maybe a two and a half D for the text to to create the engraving. Uh, first things, let's turn into 2D view, Y and Z, I can see that the part is above the piece. So first thing I'm going to do is just recenter it in Z, Z positioning, top, move to zero. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go to the 3D part to check the dimension I have here. Light a little bit. Okay, here we go. So now I can check the the depths on the pocket here. So when I'm on zero, if you look at the bottom left corner, you see the Z elevation. I have zero here in this area, and here in the pocket, I have here about thirty thousand deep, and the text here is about fifty six, so about twenty five thousand more than the pocket, and then here we go twenty five. See, for example, the big pocket here about 0.6 deep. Okay, here you will notice that there is no contours, just a 3D object here that's an STL. So, the first thing I need to do is be able to extract the contour here in Type 3. We have a special tool here when I click Special Effects, it's called Slice. When I slice, I'm going to be able to extract the contours, the outline at different elevation. In this case, what I can do, I can use at zero, because if I extract at zero, I'm going to get those, and this one, and, and probably also that one, the pocket here, the outline of the pocket. If I want to extract those, I need to do a little bit deeper. It was about 30, about 30,000, so I put 31,000, and I want two slices. Click OK. Now the software is extracting the slices. Okay, so you see the line now, the line for the text, the outline. Even those texts, I'm not too sure if you wanted to engrave those, so I'm not going to keep this. Um, so let's go back to, to the 2D and let's extract, let's put those two uh, contour in the different layers. So I'm just going to cut that one. Okay, so here the only thing I want to keep is everything except this text. Those two will be grouped together. And then we need this second layer. Cut it as well. Let's create another layer. And here the only thing I want to keep is just the text. So let's delete this. text and the pocket here. And actually those three um, those three here will be grouped together. So I don't need layer three anymore. So I have two layers now. I have the pocket in 2D that I'm going to use an engraving and those three area outline here is something I'm going to use when I do the tool pass in 3D. Let's exactly match this. Okay, so the file is ready now. We just need to use uh, the tool pass. So let's go in the cam modules. First thing I'm going to do is create a flat area. I mean, I don't know if the uh, um, first tool pass is flat 
or not or your piece is flat so we're going to use just a, a, a flat um, toolpath in 2d so let's save the file first okay I'm I'm using a sequence here so what I want to do is I want to engrave this piece at zero to have a flat area and I'm using two tool, end mill, one eighth of an inch, and a V curler because I'm sure you want maybe a draft angle on the edge here. Uh, if it's a mold, so you'll be able to uh, remove the plastic after that. So here I use two tool, end mill, one eighth for the roughing, and then a 30 degree half angle, so 60 degree included angle uh, for the finishing pass. And I'm just doing zero, which is just like to clean up this area. Second tool pass just a pocket here so same thing except now we want to go the depth was about 30,000 35 actually 30.5 and uh, same thing same tools inside and then now the text just a simple engraving uh, so the engraving we say was about 25,000 deep from a start at about 30,000 on the bottom of the pocket and in this case, I used the, the same um, V curler, 30 degree half angle. Okay, so right now we have three tool paths. We can already check the simulation to see what we got. Okay, so flat pocket, another uh, no pocket that I change the color maybe to see a little bit different here. So different pocket at about 30,000 and then and with those two part raised and then the, the text 25,000 deeper okay now the only thing we need is just the 3d so let's change the layer I select the 3d the, the three pockets and then we use something called type pot it's a type pot toolpath and in this case let's start with the bonos one eighth and I'm going to do some pass because here I can see that this one goes 0.6 deep so let's go 0.1 at a time so we're going to have six passes and um, it's just a roughing so I don't need a big step over here uh, I mean an overlap so 30% should be okay and I'm going to do a sweeping type for the uh, um, tool pass so it's going to go back and forth in different layers okay and then now for the finishing, same thing, except I'm going to, to go with a V curler. Maybe uh, let's go with this one. Conical tool, 15 degree. 15 degree uh, half angle. So 30 degree included. Okay. And maybe this time we can only do two passes. Um, because we already removed quite a few with the first tool. There we go. So you see the tool pass. So right now the, the tool pass is being created. Okay, so we have our tool pass. One thing I should have done, and I'm going to do it now, I'm just going to modify the first tool pass I did on 3D and put an overlap. Um, when I'm doing that, because I'm using a big tool, I don't want this to come too close to the surface and mark it. So I'm, I leave about 50,000 overlap. So now the, the, the small tool really like can clean up the surface. So we have all five tool paths. Right click, let's go on the NC simulation and run it. So now we see all the 2D tool paths. Okay, I can stop the simulation at any time so you can see. So right now you see like started the uh, um, the 3D and I use this pattern like crisscross pattern uh, between passes um, to get a better finish. So it, it turns like 90 degree every passes. Now we're doing the uh, finishing because remember we have two tool paths in the 3D, roughing and finishing, and that's what it does now. Okay, a few more seconds because we have three passes on the finishing. Here we go. So now 
we finish, we have the, uh, the uh, toolpath simulation. There's a, a great tool in Type 3, uh, instead of just looking at the simulation, we can actually convert this NC simulation into a 3D object. That's called Type Path. So that's top the simulation. And now you see we have a 3D object that we can look at. And even more importantly, I can reverse it. So if I go back in 3D and reverse it, like do a male-female from that, now I'm not looking at the uh, the mold anymore. I'm actually looking at the finished piece. So I can see exactly what the plastic will look like if I mold it inside of this uh, of this mold. So I go preview. So now you see we can we can see I can zoom. See you know we see the text. We see this recess now on the 3D because of course everything that's recessed is raised now. So and and I have, and I have actually a, a a picture of the plastic sample that I want to make, not just the mode. Thank you very much, and uh, don't hesitate to call me if you have any questions.